Hi, this is Kevin Solway on the uh, Men of the Infinite channel, and this is just a short video about pantheism. Now, I don't generally call myself a pantheist, but when I look at the dictionary definition of pantheism, then I have to acknowledge that my understanding does in fact fit the definition of pantheism. Now, pantheism uh, is defined as the idea or the doctrine that God is identical to the whole of nature. In other words, it's all that exists, which implies that God is not a person, not a conscious being, not, a, not supernatural and not transcendent. It is simply everything. Pantheism can be a purely intellectual, philosophical idea, but the all of nature can also be conceived of having a, uh, as having a holy or a spiritual aspect. The word holy comes from the old English word whole, which means whole, healthy, entire or complete. What is holy is what is complete. It doesn't exist in isolation. Pantheists tend to uh, have a reverence towards the all, towards the whole of nature. You might ask, why? What's so special about nature? And that's easy to answer. It's special because it's the controlling force of everything that happens. Everything you do, every choice you make, is performed entirely by nature, whether you know it or not. And whether you ever succeed or fail in anything you do is decided only by nature. Your next question will probably be, why use the word God at all, since it has a lot of cultural baggage created by both Christians and atheists who use the word God to refer to something completely different and unrelated to the all of nature. And the answer is that to the discerning reader, the word God has been traditionally used to refer to the all, the whole of nature, ultimate reality. The idea that God is some kind of conscious person is a misinterpretation. Just as we sometimes refer to Mother Nature, personalising nature, it's my opinion that the poets of old sometimes referred to God as a father. The concept Mother refers to the nurturing or the life-giving aspect of nature, the feminine aspect. And the concept father refers to the law-giving aspect of nature, the law of cause and effect, and the law of logic, the masculine, unyielding aspect of nature. The first five books of the Old Testament are known to the Jewish people as the Torah, which literally means the law. But God isn't always personalised in this way. In the New Testament, we find I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. That means everything. And it's not personal. The Bible also refers to God as the All in All. In the Gnostic Gospels, too, we find I am the All, the All has come forth from me. And the all has attained unto me. Split a piece of wood. I am there. Raise up the stone and you will find me there. So that explains why some people choose to call nature God. To them, God is not a person. It is the force behind all things. It is all things. Now some of you may have heard of people who call themselves pantheists, but who believe that the whole of nature is a conscious being. Well, such a belief doesn't make any logical sense to me. The all can't possibly be conscious, since there's nothing left over for it to be conscious of. Consciousness requires something to be conscious of, something other than yourself. 
Some people have described the all as having an intelligence, and I don't like that word either, since it implies some sort of consciousness. The all certainly has order through cause and effect and through logic, but there's really no need to call it intelligence. I'll just leave you now with a few words of wisdom on the all. <laughs> 